remarkable Mrs. Cox by Ewan Rose. Emily Cox in conversation with her late husband Lenny during the coronavirus lockdown. Part three, Boris Spanners and Curry on Wheels. Gordon Bennett ain't dropping like nine pins, Lenny. Every time I turn on the wireless and there's someone else going down with the pop. Taint choosy neither. Even cop Prime Minister Boris. In intensive care he was. Touch and go, poor mite. I mean, Holler's got him down as a bit of a clown. But since he got elected and had to face this lot, he's certainly grown a pair. He was really statesman-like when he talked to us from the podium the first time. Don't lecture, though some, of course, thought he should have. Now he tried to make us part of the answer, if you follow me. Came across as a regular bloke, not a tough. I mean, he don't sign up for this, really. He was expecting it to be all about that Brexit malarkey and he'd be battling about fish and stuff, not bugs. All that seems a million miles away now. No, there's a lot about Winnie in Boris. Cometh the hour, cometh the man, it seems. Why, he was outside number 10 clapping his dummies with the rest on us. Well, I was clapping on account of the arthritis in my fingers, but I was banging a biscuit tin with a wooden spoon. Looking back, though, he did look more than a mite peaky. Anyway, seems he's on the mend, thank heavens. Eric's eldest, Alex, or Spanners, as I calls him, on account on him being a tradie, of course. An all-rounder when it comes to fixing homes. And gardens, too, for that matter. Where was I? Oh, yes, he rang us this morning to see if I was all right. Good Cox family spirit. Look after each other and everything else will look after itself. It's what you said and what I always told them all. Anyways, Spanners is a cheeky wag. Always there with a witticism to lighten the day. I was feeling down after hearing about Boris, but Spanners says, I'm just checking, Grand Grands, you ain't got yourself a toy boy moved in. Not allowed, unless you keep your social distance. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a cheeky beggar, Spanners, and no mistake, I retorts. And then we talk about his family. Amber, his wife's an hairdresser, but she ain't doing none of that coy furing at the moment and so has turned around to baking. Got a slice of Victoria sponge with fresh cream to drop off to you and Amber says, are you all right for bog roll? Well, I was down to me last two, as it happens, and apparently it's rarer than rocking horse poo in the shops. But Spanners being Spanners knows people. I think it's what they call a new paper currency. That's what Spanners said. Unless, of course, he was jesting me. Anyway, he comes round with me cake and a pack of nine loo rolls. He puts them on the doorstep and then steps back outside the gate. And we had a nice little chat about how his kids are passing their days. Do you know, Gran Gran, that I'm going to be begging to get back to school? Oh, another thing happened. Nice thing. Chap from one of them Indian places on the high street what's had to shut up shop due to the pop came at the same time as Spanners was gesticulating. Kept his distance like and spoke from his van window. He took it upon himself to bring free curry suppers to us golden oldies. Of course, Spanners tries to knob one, but Bollywood, as I call him, sends Spanners on his bike. They shared a laugh and I had a curry for dinner. Not some of I do as a routine, but it was much appreciated. In fact, we're all starting to appreciate things again, Lenny. 
we miss what we had. What I miss most is the family hugs, that more than anything. What we took for granted. Little things, Lenny. Little things. Good night, mate. Love you. The Remarkable Mrs. Cox is a Ewan Rose Reviews production, starring Pat Dixon Dale as Emily Cox, music by Adrian Kimberlin, and produced by Phil Brown.